तो आप देख सकते हैं साक्षी महाराज रमेश भाई भी आ गए फ्रंट रो just a few months after an ugly diplomatic incident between the two countries we have rajdeep sardesai also on the forecourt of the rashtrapati bhavan right before the arrival of the prime minister in just a short while from now uh, rajdeep the forecourt of the rashtrapati bhavan is filled with big stars big big stars they're all there for modi 3.0 what are you seeing around you what's the sense what's the mood well this is modi is uh, third swearing in and i think the difference between the first and the second in particular the first and the second had a much stronger contingent there i say what i would call the saffron brigade in the front row the likes of sadvi ritambara for example were prominent members right in the very front this time you are seeing the likes of chandrababu naidu pavan kalyan nitish kumar all in the front row suggesting in some way how things have changed given that we have a coalition government when i look at the so ministers what sounds so minister. i don't see much change the one name that i see new is shivraj singh chauhan uh, he's the one front ranker along with mr kumar swami and manohar lal khattar all of them three former chief ministers all of them in the front row along with jp nadda who will be uh, relinquishing the president's post to the bjp later this Today, month but if i look around me the sense of the difference that i get between then and now was that in in the first and the second government i much greater presence of the stronger sang parivar in row one this time i think the attempt has been made to be more inclusive the likes of sarukh khan are very much in front row this time i'm not sure i saw sarukh in 2014 or 2019 in row 1 and maybe that only reflects just how uh, this verdict in a way is for a more inclusive a competitive government that you have many of the allies very much in front row with a lot of eyes on chandra babu naidu and nitish kumar who are sitting next to each other you know rajdeep a lot of suspense still over kon banega kya mantri you know th- that we still don't know uh, under the previous two modi dispensations that suspense to, used to be at a peak there is a sense now among political reporters that now that you have some allies the avenues for guessing becomes a little bit easier is it as india's top political reporter what is your sense anpeta Uh, my sense tip is that the top four posts a finance uh, home, external affairs and defense will be with the bjp so there will be an element of continuity uh, it will be interesting to see how shivraj singh chauhan who's been uh, a chief minister for more than a decade in madhya pradesh is now accommodated it will be interesting to see how the allies are accommodated the sense we got from chandra babu naidu is that he is keen on an infrastructure ministry we got the sense from the jdu that they are keen on railways uh, what ministry will mr kumar swami get would also be interesting but i know that Shivraj Singh Chauhan has been I think potentially the agriculture ministry remember that's one area he focused upon when he was uh, in Madhya Pradesh uh, as chief minister for an extended period of time uh, but there is a strong element of continuity when i look at the the people in front of me uh, many of the ministers uh, who have won in the lok sabha i have been repeated few from the raj sabha sabha the likes of dr jay shankar nirmala sitaraman uh, uh, ashwini vaishnav return and significantly who's lost out uh, smriti rani lost from amethi she doesn't feature here today anurag thakur did win from hamirpur but he's not in the list that we see here in front of us chirag paswan will be one of the new young faces along with jayan choudhury again two allies one from uttar pradesh one from bihar so you see that most of the major allies will become ministers uh, kumar swami's government uh, jds has only two mps but he's going to be uh, a cabinet minister the only uh, uh, a rankle at the moment seems to be with the ncp which was gunning for a cabinet berth uh, then uh, 
uh, eventually didn't agree to settle for a ministerial state with independent charge. So they are not here. And that really signifies what went wrong in the Mahayuti in Maharashtra. That was one of the states where the BJP alliance simply did not work. And therefore, uh, there is no member of the NCP Ajit Pawar group uh, who's going to join the cabinet here today. But otherwise, all the allies in some form or the other are being accommodated here today. Last question, uh, 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 Rajdeep. And, you know, as journalists, we tend to make a big deal of body language and, you know, gestures and facial expressions and things like that. But at a time when that's pretty much all we have to go with, what is your sense of the body language of the incoming Modi Sarkar? What is it looking like? The realities of coalition are obviously there. But what are you making of the body language you see around you of the powers that be? You know, when you look at this, uh, the body language, the likes of Chandrababu Naidu and Ritish Kumar, they are practiced politicians. They won't reveal too much. Uh, we spoke a little more to Mr. Naidu. I think you cut live to that. And he said, you know, uh, I am here uh, to ensure continue. Uh, I'm here to ensure a strong government. We are part of the government. We fought together. And I think that's the spirit, at least at the moment. Will that change six months from now? We don't know. But I think with the Mili Juli Sarkar, uh, 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 Shiv, as I said at the outset, the aim will have to be at least to send out signals that the allies are also uh, equal partners in this exercise, particularly the two main allies, uh, uh, Tish Kumar with 12 uh, MPs and Chandrababu Naidu with 16. Uh, and the very fact that they are seated right there in the front row is, I think, a sign of the times, the belief that the BJP is dependent this time on the allies, unlike the case in 2014 and 19. So the body language, I think, reflects a sense that you've got to be more accommodative this time, unlike the case was in 2014 and 2019. Rajiv, thanks very much for joining me.